Taking action with insights from Let's Talk 2016. Hello everyone. Today I am doing a very special edition of Let's Talk. Over the past year, I've been able to sit and chat with nine experts on practice, growing, and marketing insights. One thing I loved asking them at the end of sessions was, what's one thing that you can do right now? And I've taken all of these insights, these actionable small steps that you can take and put them into one video. So today we'll be looking at insights that will help you improve your website's copy, start blogging, market without the guilt, create an online income stream, start video marketing, hire an online business manager, market with your superpower, and start a podcast. So if you're interested in refreshing your memory with all of these great insights or seeing them for the first time, this is a great video for you. Let's talk. First up, one thing you can do to improve your website's copy with Nicole. Okay. Um, one simple and actionable tip. I think go through your website, look at each page, and make sure there is one call to action on every page. Um, so that could, so a call to action, as we said before, is an invitation for them to like take that first step of working with you. So whether it's if you have a, a newsletter or a free resource that you want them to download to get on your newsletter, then ask them to do that on on their page. Or, um, or you know, it could also just be like, go to my about page and read this, or um, join me on Facebook, or call to schedule a consultation. Um, but make sure go through each page and pick an invitation, a call to action that makes sense and then put it in there and keep it to one or two, but like any more than any more than one or two really confuses somebody and they end up like not picking anything. Yeah. So if you have like a sidebar with like 60 different things on it. <laughs> that's not what you're talking about. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> more is not more. <laughs> One thing you can do to start blogging with Clinton and Juliet. Yeah, one of the biggest objections we hear from therapists is that they don't have time to blog. And uh, so I guess my one tip for anyone who's feeling like, you know, I've got such a busy practice, I've got a family life, I'm trying to juggle all these different competing interests, you know, I just don't have time to blog, is I would really encourage you just to start small, you know, that this does not need to be a project that's going to take five hours a week, but just start with writing uh, 20 minutes a week. You now see if you can just sit down and write for 20 or 25 minutes once a week and start with the, the most common problems and issues that your ideal clients or if you're, you know, a wellness business, customers are struggling with. And See if you can just, you know, even across a month, you're going to end up with four articles that really address some of these really big concerns. And I think that's a great starting point. So I would encourage people just to break it down, start small, but consistency is the key. And if you can, if you can what I do is just put it into uh, my schedule. So maybe every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m., whatever, that's when you write. And then on Thursday, you publish. But be consistent and, uh, and, and be regular with what you're doing. And I was also going to add to that, Clinton, is, you know, write, start with shorter posts, you know, maybe four or 500 words. And if you want to do longer ones later, you can, because it's less intimidating to write a shorter post. One thing you can do to market without the guilt with Allison. I think just reframing it as you're just letting people know what you provide. That's all. Like if you sold ice cream, you wouldn't be like, I sell ice cream. <laughs> oh, we've got ice cream. It's good if you're hungry. <laughs> and so just like loosening up around it, like there are going to be some blocks there and that's okay. But at least letting marketing be marketing and not whatever version of marketing you're telling yourself it is. Like it's just telling people that you're there. You're not having to convince anybody of anything. Please don't. Please don't convince anybody that they need to come see you. Um, that's just 
salesy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just take the pressure off. One thing you can do to create an online income stream with Joe. So the easiest way to do this is I want you to think of the five things that you have to teach every single client that comes through your door. Hmm. Just five. The five things every client, that, well, another way to say that is what are the five things you wish every person knew before they turned up into your clinic or into your practice? Okay, so you got those five things down. So we've five. Uh, you've now got five modules for a training program. You've Ooh. now got five modules for a workbook. You've now got five modules for a video series. You've now got five modules for a webinar. Um, that's that is useful content just because it's easy for you and it feels like common sense for you that's because you're the person who's invested five years in learning how to do this and you've spent 150 grand getting there and you're doing it <laughs> don't devalue that people need to know that therapy or any clinical intervention we got to demystify it that is the biggest bridge we need to get to the, the gap that we need to fill the bridge we need to build so do that with an online service that's it's not a big risk you're not you know, doing EMDR via Skype or anything. Um, you're just informing people and helping them make a better decision about how, how then to choose you as the therapist they want to work with. So that would be my one thing. One thing you can do to start video marketing with Ernesto. Okay, so some of the things that I, in any of my workshops, one of the things that I help people break into a confident video marketer is grab your cell phone and all you have to do is t look at the camera, mm -hmm. talk to it and just say, hi, my name is Ernesto. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and I am passionate about working with people who are wanting to market, but they're very much afraid to. So just continue to talk and talk and talk. Don't do anything about that. Don't post it anywhere and just replay it back to you ah, and just process cool. and just keep it there. Just keep it there. That's an awesome tip. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Just keep talking and then when you get confident, start challenging yourself more and start challenging yourself more until you become connected with that part of yourself that you are so critical about. One thing you can do to hire an online business manager with Francis. I, I would say to sit down and make a list of what you have on your plate. Mm -hmm. in, in all actuality, this is something that I tend to put in my email prior to the consultation. Make a list of everything. Don't leave anything out, even if it's, you know, feeding the dogs. <laughs> and <laughs> then to look at the top 10 and then try to narrow that even down into the top five or three if you want to get really technical and nitty gritty. And then out of those top three, prioritize. What's the top three things I need to get off of my plate? Hmm. And I think if you, if, if a therapist can do that and they can know exactly what they need to get off their plate, that just streamlines things a lot faster. One thing you can do to market with your superpower with Annie. Okay, so actually I'll take them back to their about page. Oh, really? So yeah. I would I would go there cuz it's such a important place where people are going to visit usually right after the home page and then they're going to check you out and then get a feel for whether they're going to take the next step. And so it can be a huge predictor of whether they work with you, how they feel there. So I would look at your About Me page, but with really fresh eyes, mm -hmm. and ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, or hopefully not zero to 10, but on a scale <laughs> of one to 10, how much does it reflect your superpowers? Like mm -hmm. how much is it really you and you when you're at your best? And then go through and make some changes. So one really important change for people can be getting a new photo or can be freshening up the language and making sure it sounds like you, making sure that you are mentioning some of those qualities about yourself and, um, and then making sure that it feels like a conversation with the client. One thing that you can do to start a podcast with Melvin. Uh, I would say this is more of a mental thing, mm. uh, but don't let the, the sort of thing to get it perfect stop you from launching a podcast 
like if you look at my first like several episodes i mean i cringe you know oh uh, i love because... those didn't you do one with cory bank <laughs> yeah, in the I beginning did. that one was good i liked it. <laughs> it it was good but you know it was just i i remember just being so scared oh uh, even those initial ones like my voice was so shaky it's still a little bit shaky but uh <laughs> my, my voice was so shaky and but i think the thing is if i had just um I felt so much fear back then. And if I had just felt that fear and not taken action, uh, like I know I STC wouldn't be where it is now. Uh, but I think that's the thing. It's, it's very similar to, um, to when you're seeing, when we're first seeing our mock, our first mock client, you know, in grad school, uh, it's the same thing with a podcast. You're not going to get it right the first time. That's okay. Uh, we're not aiming for like NPR quality, you know, but what we're doing is we're, we're, we, we all have this message to share and we're trying to put that out into the world and the other stuff will come with time. You know, you'll get better at interviewing, you'll get better with the technology, but that, um, I think a lot of times, uh, folks feel that fear and then they're like, uh, I don't want to do that. But that's such a, I mean, it's such a disservice because I think so many of us in the field are so talented, uh, you know, and we have such enormous perspectives and, uh, yeah, and our voice needs to get out into the world for sure. You can find all of the notes and links from the insights that were shared today on my blog at catlove.com backslash session nine. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.